Hello and welcome to this video. In my last video, we discussed how water can come up your abrasive line and how using the anti backflush valve, you can reduce this coming all the way up into your garnet feeder. Now, there's several ways that water can enter your abrasive line. Firstly, it can be a damaged orifice or a mixing chamber. The second cause can be when your water jet nozzle tip or focusing tube touches the material that you're cutting. And as the water cannot exit, it will go back up into the cutting head and into your abrasive line. However, the most common cause is a leaking on off valve. Now, as most of you would be aware, the on off valve works to control the flow of water to the cutting head. And this is turning on and off as you're cutting, as you're stopping cutting. And over time, this will wear. If you're doing a lot of short cycle cutting, it will wear a lot faster. So we've seen lives of on off valve seal kits last from one month up to 18 months. Now I've got some examples here of on off valves. So we've got one from H2O Jet um, or a flow style as they're sometimes known. We have one from BFT and we had one from KMT. Now there's three main ways that you can tell if your on off valve is leaking. The first two involve these whip holes on the side of the valve. The first one will indicate that your high pressure seal in your seal kit has either worn or disintegrated. The bottom whip hole will indicate that the needle and seat or poppet and seat are no longer seating correctly. And the third way is water leaking out the bottom of your water jet focusing tube or abrasive nozzle. Now there's a good way to determine this if you're unsure. You can run your pump up to full pressure, ensuring that the valve is closed and hold the pressure static for about two minutes. If you're having water coming out the bottom of your focusing tube or abrasive nozzle, that is a sure indication that your seal kit needs replacing. Now I'll demonstrate how to replace the on-off valve seal kit in the on-off valve. So the first thing we do is we turn our air on. This will actuate the valve or open it. And what this does is just release any pressure off the needle and seat. If this is a bit tight, you can use a vise. However, most of the time you can undo them by hand. So once we've undone that a couple of turns, we can go and turn our air off as there is no chance of the needle and seat meeting. Once we've done that, once that's off, we can then go and remove our nozzle body off the base of the valve body. So undoing our Nozzle nut and take that out. See, in the base of our valve body, we'll have a seat and an o ring. So we take our seal pick and being careful not to scratch any surfaces, we just flick that one out. This has been recently assembled, so it's quite easy. There can be some trouble at times. We also have our seat nicely falling out for us. Again, being recently assembled, it's easy to come out. Sometimes you need to give it just a sharp tap, just being careful to you know, ensure you have a, a rag or something soft to protect any services. So once we've done that, the next thing we can do is we take our seal removal tool and we insert this into the base of our valve body over the end of the poppet. And then we can push that one out, push that through, and we'll remove our poppet, our backup ring, and our high pressure seal. Once we've done that, we can then take our seal pick. We can use a pen just to push the seal removal tool back through enough for us to 
retrieve that, pull it out. We then still have our remaining red eye ring in there. So we just take our seal pick again, again being very careful, especially in this section, to not scratching surfaces. We remove that. Now, the next thing we do is we inspect the ball. So the length of the insides of our valve body, making sure there's no scratches, um, as this will cause premature failure of your seal kit. Um, if it is quite scratched and you are having to replace it quite often, um, you need to replace your valve body. Um, so now we'll put this back together. In this um, case, or for demonstration purposes, I will simply be using the kit we pulled out. Um, however, you would replace it with a brand new kit and it's important to replace every um, part. So, first things first, is we take our molly coat, you can also use silicon grease or o-ring lube, and we just grab a little bit on our fingertips, just to, it's a bit hard to see, but just, just enough, because um, what we want to do is lubricate the side of our, or the length of our poppet. Um, being careful not to get any on the end as this will interfere with the uh, needle and seat seating correctly. Uh, so once we've lubed that up nicely, we can pop them in our removal tool there. Um, we can then put our backup ring on. Our high pressure seal. So we want this particular one facing upwards um, with the recess there for our o-ring. Again we grab just a little bit of molly coat and we give this a nice coat. Um, being careful not to get any on the insides of our o-ring as we don't want this to touch our end of our poppet. Um, so once we've done that, we can pop him on the end there. We then take our um, seal guide tool um, and we insert this into the top of our valve body. So screwing that all the way until it bottoms out. We don't want to over tighten. And then we push this down on top of our seal insert tool. Um, the guide tool is slightly tapered, so it just nicely forces or gently forces those parts into place. Once we've done that, um, we can then remove our guide tool. And our next step is to put our seating this is a directional seat, so this one's got a smaller hole on one side, a large on the other. Some are non-directional, um, however this one is a directional one and we want the small hole um, facing to the inside of our valve body, as this is where the needle will be, or pop it will be seating against. Um, we then put our o-ring in, again we just want a little bit of molly coat and what this does, it serves to hold this in place. So once we've got our O-ring in place, we can then go and put our nozzle body back on. Um, so inserting like so. Um, nothing to note is you just ensure you've got sufficient um, thread lube on there. In this case, I have already from previous. However, if it is dirty and lacking in thread lube, you would apply that and give it a nice clean, ensuring that those threads don't bind. So once that's done up, we can then reattach this to our actuator. First thing we do before that is turn our air back on just to um, have the actuator open. Um, 
just to again ensure that we don't have any chance of our needle and seat meeting under pressure until everything is in place. So we just screw that back on like so. Again, with the threads, you would ensure they're nice and clean and have plenty of thread loop. Once that's done all the way up to a reasonable tight position, we can just pull that back and give it a quick flick just to get a nice bind on there. So we need some pressure to, um, to undo that when we go to do so. And once we've done that, we can then turn our air off to close the valve. And that is complete. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoy this video and we'll speak again soon.